the rod of Jesse has blossomed. The virgin has brought forth one who is both God and man. God has restored peace, reconciling in himself the depths and the heights. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. As we joyfully come into the presence of God to offer the sacrifice on our behalf, on that of the whole church, and indeed the whole of humanity, we ask the prayers of the Mother of God to keep us always united firmly to her Son in the bond of charity. As we now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ, have mercy. You are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. May the venerable intercession of blessed Mary, ever virgin, come to our aid, we pray, O Lord, and free us from every danger, so that we may rejoice in your peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. Jeroboam thought to himself, the kingdom will return to David's house if now these people go up to offer sacrifices in the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem, the house of these people will return to their master, Rehoboam, king of Judah and they will kill me. After taking counsel, the king made two cows of gold and said to the people, you have been going up to Jerusalem long enough. Here is your God, O Israel, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. And he put one in Bethel and other in Dan. This led to sin because the people frequented those cows in Bethel and in Dan. He also built temples on the high places and made priests from among the people who were not Levites. Jeroboam established a feast in the eighth month, on the 15th day of the month, to duplicate in Bethel the pilgrimage feast of Judah, with sacrifices to the cows he had made, and he stationed the imbetel priests of high places he had built. Jeroboam did not give up his evil ways after this, but again made priests for the high places from among the common people. Whoever desired it was consecrated and became a priest of high places. This was a sin on the part of the house of Jeroboam, for which it was to be cut off and destroyed from the earth. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor you. We have sinned. And we, our fathers, we have committed crimes, we have done wrong. Our fathers in Egypt considered not your wonders. Remember, remember us Lord, as we favor your people. They made a calf in Horeb and adored a molten calf image. They exchanged their glory for the image of a grass-eating bullock. Remember, remember us, Lord, Lord, as we favor your people. They forgot the God who had saved them, who had done great deeds in Egypt, 
wondrous deeps in the land of Ham, terrible things at the Red Sea. Remember also, Lord, as you favor your people. Alleluia, alleluia. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. In those days when there again was a great crowd without anything to eat, Jesus summoned the disciples and said, My heart is moved with pity for the crowd, because they've been with me now for three days and have nothing to eat. If I send them away hungry to their homes, they will collapse on the way, and some of them have come a great distance. His disciples answered him, Where can anyone get enough bread to satisfy them here in this deserted place? Still he asked them, how many loaves do you have? They replied, seven. He ordered the crowd to sit down on the ground. Then taking the seven loaves, he gave thanks, broke them, gave them to his disciples to distribute, and they distributed them to the crowd. They also had a few fish. He said the blessing over them and ordered them distributed also. They ate and were satisfied. They picked up the fragments left over, seven baskets. There were about 4,000 people. He dismissed the crowd and got into the boat with his disciples and came to the region of Dalmanutha. The Gospel of the Lord. Jeroboam was a, an official in Solomon's administration in Jerusalem. He was from one of the northern tribes. He was dismissed at a certain point, and uh, we can only guess at his motives. But he, when there was trouble between the, the ten northern tribes and the tribe of Judah, of which uh, David and Solomon were members, the whole house of David, he helped to effect a, a revolt, a political revolt. And the ten northern tribes broke away from the tribe of Judah. And Jeremoam set himself up as king, as a rival to Solomon's son Rehoboam. But in order to establish his independence, he noticed how his people were still going to Jerusalem for the pilgrimage festivals as they had been wont to do under Kings David and Solomon and he was afraid that this would uh, detract from the loyalty the people ought to have to him. And so he set up two rival places of, of pilgrimage in Bethel which is actually not that far from Jerusalem on the border between the kingdom of Judah and the northern kingdom and then Dan, which is way up in the north of northern Israel. And he set up calves. Uh, Not that the people were worshiping the calves, but as with the Ark of the Covenant and the cherubim, it wasn't that the people were worshiping the Ark, 
or the tablets within it or the, the images of the cherubim, but rather the invisible God who was present with his people through that uh, sacrament, if you will, that visible sign. Now the problem with the worship in the northern kingdom wasn't that uh, the people were now worshiping calves. No, they worshiped the God of Israel. But they were worshiping him in a way that the Lord himself had not established. They took it upon themselves to, to change the rituals. And as the scripture says, that this was a sin. This is not fulfill God's desire, even though the people went to Bethel and Dan to worship the Lord. This might be a, a, a subtle point, I don't know. We certainly live in a, a culture where the individual asserts his or her rights to such an extent that they even say, well, I'm the one who determines how I'm going to worship God. As long as I'm sincere, that, that, that must be pleasing to the Lord. But I'm the one that makes the determination. But that is displeasing to the Lord. Why? Because that is not his will. He speaks his will through his son, through the apostles, and through their successors. And he speaks his will into the hearts of the faithful united in the unity of the church. But we understand the temptation, all of us do, to go our own way. To do it our way, like Frank Sinatra said, I did it my way. Our intentions can be good, but the result is still sinful. Lots of implications to that, that truth. As, for instance, uh, Christians speak with each other in a church that is divided. to make sure that we're discerning God's will and not what we say God's will is. It's hard work of discernment. We turn to the, to the gospel and it illustrates this, this strange sort of dividedness in the human person. Jeroboam and those who followed him thought that they certainly had the the, the, the authority and the wherewithal to change the established patterns of worship that God had revealed to Moses. They thought they could do it. it was, certainly it's within my control. And so they did it. Now the disciples are with Jesus and there's a huge crowd following him and our Lord has compassion uh, on their needs. As we would expect he would. But then he turns to his disciples and says, uh, why don't you feed them? And here, rather than saying, oh, we certainly can do it. We have the wherewithal. Sure. Then they're confronted with their own limitations. Jesus confronts them. He says, well, <laughs> we, we've, we've got seven loaves of bread. How can that feed 4,000 people and a few fish? Good point. Jesus says, do what I command you. They do it, and the people are fed. The mother of God plays a very important role in the life of the church. After all, Jesus gave her to us to be our, our mother, our spiritual mother. And that's a gift we don't want to uh, refuse. But you remember the incident at the wedding at Cana where Mary was there and Jesus and his disciples. And Mary said to the, uh, to the attendants, 
at the wedding when they had run out of wine and Jesus was going to he was going to do something about it. Mary said, do whatever he tells you. Do whatever he tells you. And that's what Mary does in the church. Ultimately, she consoles us and gives us some internal care in so many, many ways. A rich relationship when we cultivate that relationship with her. But ultimately, she will say to us, do whatever Jesus tells you to do. Even if it seems foolish, do it. May the mother of God help us always to, uh, to understand our own limitations, to work within them, but always in obedience to God, allowing the grace of God, which can do more than we can even imagine, as St. Paul says, may work powerfully in us for the sake of this broken world. Let us stand. Brought to life by the fruit of, Je of Mary's womb, our Lord Jesus, let us pray. Lord, the Virgin Mother received your word in faith and brought forth fruit in charity. Through her intercession, may your church bear fruit that will last. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. The Virgin Mary gave birth to your Son, our Savior. Through her intercession, bring your church to full maturity in your kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. The Virgin Mary is honored as a mother of God, through her intercession, gather children from every land into your family through the proclamation of the word and the celebration of the sacraments, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord, for God's blessings of unity and peace upon all marriages and families, for an abundance of vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and consecrated life, we pray to the Lord. Grants our prayer, O Lord, for peace in the world, especially in Eastern Europe and other troubled spots. For the protection of our service, men and women and first responders, for those who've fallen, for the consolation <clears throat> of their families, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For all those who are burdened by any need, for the sick and dying, the homeless and unemployed, for widows and orphans, refugees, immigrants and migrants, for victims of war, violence, natural disasters, persecutions, and human exploitation for all those who are weighed down by addictions or chronic pain or mental illness. For all the suffering poor, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For God's blessings upon our parish and all of our parish apostolates that always desire us to listen to Jesus and to do what he tells us. We may bear fruit for the new evangelization. We pray to the Lord. Grants our prayer, O Lord. For all those who've died in the hope of resurrection, especially among our family, friends, and benefactors, for the repose of the soul of our parishioner, Kenneth Brown, whose funeral mass will be on Wednesday, we pray to the Lord. Grants our prayer, O Lord, for the special prayers which we bring before the Lord this day. O God, you give life to the world through the life, death, and resurrection of your Son, Jesus. Through the prayers, motherly care of the Virgin Mary, grant us the light and healing that he brings, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. <clears throat> Blessed 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Humble spirit and contrite heart, may be accepted by you. May your sacrifice in your sight to be pleasing, my force and glory from both Lord and Christ is from my sins. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. <clears throat> we offer you, O Lord, these offerings of conciliation and praise, humbly asking that following the example of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may present our very selves as a holy sacrifice pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. And this Mass is being offered for all of those who are traveling outside the parish or who are removed from our community for whatever reason. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saints Hugh, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Graciousness is poured out upon your lips, for God has blessed you forevermore. The body of Christ. 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 The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Having nourished us with heavenly food, O Lord, grant that according to the example of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may serve you in purity of life and magnify you with her in wholehearted praise. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. St. Joseph, pray for us. 